Okay, here we're going to look at electrons and neutrons, which are two of the subatomic particles located in an atom. So, the energy levels of electrons, we're going to start with the electrons first. Energy is the capacity to cause change. Now, energy, as we have discussed earlier, energy in human life, we have our chemical energy here being converted into ATP, which is the body's energy currency as part of our metabolism. Now, there is heat given off and chemical waste given off, uh, but the energy of those electrons, so it's allowing us to have energy, which is the capacity to cause change. The main molecule is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So the energy levels in electrons, well, there's two main types. There's potential energy, which is probably how you're feeling about right now. It's stored energy that can be released, commonly referred to as chemical potential energy, which is the energy stored in the bonds of molecules. I kind of think of it as like a energy at rest there. Then we have our kinetic energy, which is the energy that's being currently used in a reaction. So those chemical bonds that are just kind of there, they have kind of that potential energy or that stored energy. Then when a reaction is occurring, we have that kinetic energy, such as we see here with the cat playing with the toy mouse here. That's the energy currently being used in a reaction. Continuing on the energy levels of the electrons, the electron of an atom differ in their amounts of potential energy. An electron state of potential energy is called the energy level or its electron shell. And as we see here, the very bottom here is called the ground state. As those electrons work their way out, their energy level increases. These out here would be considered a little bit more of an excited state, and electrons can jump to these different electron shells with different energy levels. Realize the ground state is the most basic, lowest energy form, and excited states, as you work your way up, the amount of energy increases that those electrons have. So arrangement of electrons in an atom, that first energy level can hold a maximum of two electrons. The second and third energy levels can, hold, can contain up to eight electrons. So we see in the middle here with hydrogen, one lonely proton. Now just with one proton, I have to tell you this, this was hydrogen. Seeing one proton uh, indicates that it's hydrogen. Seeing two protons indicates this is helium. Seeing here, we have 10 protons, a little hard to count there, would be neon. Three might be a little easier, this is lithium. Uh, we see those energy levels here of these electrons working their way up. We'll notice in all of these cases, the first energy level can only hold a maximum of two electrons. The second and third energy levels can hold up to eight. We see that indicated here. I'm going to try to keep this fairly simple on the smaller atoms, but the same holds true as we work our way up. So classification of the elements. Families of elements share the same ending electron configuration, as we see here. So we're looking at group 1 and group 2. If we were to count all the electrons in the outermost shell here, we'd find that there's only one. Outermost shell here, there's one. Outermost shell, there's one. Even all the way down here at Francium, the outermost shell, there's only that one electron. Now in group two, we notice that there's two electrons in each one of these outer shells. As a result, they share simil similar chemical characteristics. So this is why all the elements in group one have similar chemical characteristics. So have that same one X outside or valence electron. That outside electron is going to, what's going to do the vast majority of the reaction because that's on the outermost area. The electrons kind of in the middle here get stuffed in. It's the ones on the outside doing the reaction. Group 1 has one outer one. Group 2 has two. Now these valence electrons that I mentioned, move out of the way for a little bit. Valence electrons here are the ones on the outside. These electrons are in the highest principal energy level, and they determine the chemical reactivity. So an important note to make there. Elements in a group share the same number of valence electrons as we see here. All of these have eight valence electrons, seven and six and five and four and three and two and one. However, if we look here a little more closely, well, it'd be easy to think all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, there's an error in here. So I'm not sure if you can spot that particular error, but if you go through and you look at all of the protons that these elements have, yes, all of these have one valence electron, all of these have two. But if we look up here at element that is located in this upper corner here does not have eight valence electrons. This is helium. This actually only has two valence electrons. So when I say spot the error, 
the error is located right here with helium having only two valence electrons. Everything else in the noble gas family will have eight. Now looking at this kind of complexity of the periodic table showing the electron shells as we see here, notice that they do get a lot more electrons as we get um, down to the rows six and seven of the periodic table. But keep in mind, all of these have the same number of valence electrons, except again, remember helium has two, everything else in the noble gas family has eight valence electrons, which as remember are the electrons located in the outermost shell. Now the octet rule, atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons in order to acquire a full set of eight valence or outer shell electrons. Elements with full valence shell are chemically inert, they're stable. So we want to have eight, here's oxygen, typically has one, two, three, four, five, six. But when it combines with carbon here, it's sharing these two, so therefore this count as part of oxygen, it will have eight. Because they're being shared, they count with carbon two, and to count all the circles around carbon, we'll also see eight. So think of this octet rule, there's an octagon, an octopus, or a musical octet. Each atom is trying to gain or lose or share electrons in order to maintain that full octet, or that eight valence electrons in its outer shell.